So what are some types of public domain works? I mean, works that are just in the public domain because they're not copyrightable. Titles, names, short phrases, character names. Hmm. Well, those are actually trademarkable, but if they're not trademarked, if they don't um, get trademark protection, then they're public domain. Hey, yeah, cool, right? Um, ideas and facts are not copyrightable, right? Because those are patentable. Yeah, well, facts aren't. Well, I guess facts could be patentable, or how you apply them to an innovation. But you know, <clears throat> that's not. You know, you can't copyright information. That is therefore not not copyrightable. Facts are not copyrightable. Um, ideas are not copyrightable, but they are patentable. We know government works are in the public domain. Obviously, if someone creates something and they want to give it to the public and put a public domain notice on it, that's in the public domain. And then the most common type of a public domain work is a work whose term has expired, whose copyright has expired. And we know this is anything made before 1925, except for, bing, sound recordings, right? But what does this mean? Does this mean this? I want you to think about this. Will anything that's made in your lifetime be public domain in your lifetime? And the answer is hella unlikely. Something, you know, think about it. If copyright for most of the works that you value are going to be lasting for 95 years, right? Because they're made by companies. They're made by record labels, film studios, game publishers, book publishers, whatever it is. Most of the works that like, we love will never be in the public domain in our lifetime. In fact, those authors have a monopoly during your lifetime. You may see stuff from the 1960s fall into the public domain, but stuff made in your lifetime, something, a song that's made when you're 20, won't fall into the public domain until you're 115. Cool. So... The balance is kind of, you know, the scales have shifted because copyright keeps getting, duration keeps getting longer and longer and longer. And that's to protect a very, 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 very small, beep, 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 small amount of works, right, out there um, that are economically viable um, at the expense of all the other content that's out there that maybe could be accessible. Okay, but just think about that. You have to think about what a limited monopoly is. Oh, it's a forever minus a day. Well, is that a limited time? And so how you flip that logic of, oh, it's forever minus a day. Well, like, what's forever to you? What's forever to me? You know, 95 years feels like forever. Life plus 70 years is definitely forever. You know, so, um, but the court has a different logic of that. So what's the value of public domain? Obviously, you know, it's a building block. It's like the stepping stone, like of having a rich public domain. It gives us a bunch of basically stuff that we can use to make and innovate from. It gives people access to information, content, to culture, to inf ideas, etc. Um, people can use this stuff for educational purposes. There's just so much there. The more you have, it's low cost access, you know, um, the more stuff that is made free, right, it's easier for people to have accessibility to. Um, it, ser it can serve the public interest and allows for democratic, you know, and free speech. You know, allow the more stuff that's in the public means the less control that authors have, which then gives us the ability to use that stuff to make a statement. Um, you know what I mean? And like, look at companies like Disney or Shepard Ferry, they show the value of a rich public domain. Now, here's a list of, um, you can look at a list of like where you can find public domain works that you want to use if you want to use them in your critical remix project or in your own work. So the Prelinger archives, where you can find video, Pond5, um, public domain review, LibriVox, the Gutenberg project for books. Um, New York Times has an archive of public domain um, you know, works that they have. There's public domain pictures, musical works. You know, all sorts of places where you can go online and find um, archives and databases of what's in the public domain. So it's a little bit more of the public domain. Uh, you add that to the Creative Commons, and I kind of wanted you to see a little bit more about like how you can access content legally. So you have Creative Commons, you have public domain works. I mean, you want to access content that's not yours necessarily. You have Creative Commons, 
public domain and then fair use, right? Legal, legally, legally. Um, but anyways, take that knowledge, chew on it, and uh, we'll be back. And then next week, we're going to be talking about um, sampling and music. The whole week, we're going to watch a film called Copyright Criminals, and we're going to talk through all that. We're going to learn what Drake's greatest musical accomplishment has been, and it's actually a fair use case, not any of that uh, bullshit R&B crap that he makes. Uh, anyways, it's the real Dr. Dre from Goat's Beard Homestead, you know, woodworker Willie. Um, I'm out of here. Peace!